This odd looking machine is called the tube. <laughs> that is quite a paper airplane. It spins as it flies. It gets its directional stability from how quickly that it's spinning. But more importantly, that's how it derives its lift from how fast it's spinning. Special boundary layer effect, little gobs of air get stuck in all the tiny imperfections, microscopic imperfections in the surface of this plane. And the faster it spins, the more it can interact with the surrounding air and develop lift. The upshot is, as it's spinning this way, it can shove enough air off of that side to lift it up like that. So, uh, because it's moving forward through the air like that. So, very interesting aircraft round paper airplane, the center of gravity is right there. It's not even in, not even touching the plane. It's in the middle of all that. Center of gravity in the middle, Ooh, thin air. And so to fold it, we're gonna start with an eight and a half by 11 sheet. We're gonna start with the long side up. We're gonna fold down one third. And one third means that the layered part's gonna be the same length as the unlayered part. Uh, and it's okay if the layered part is a little bit bigger. And so to make sure that you're folding straight, get this edge and this edge lined up and start in the middle and sweep to the outside. And there's one third folded over. And you'll notice that's, you know, visually you can see that's a little bit bigger than that, which is, that's okay. It's actually preferable to have that a little bit bigger. So don't, don't sweat the one third thing. You don't have to whip out the ruler and do any of that crazy stuff. Uh, just get, get about a third over there. Now we're gonna fold the layered part in half Bringing the top down to that, what used to be the top edge of the paper. Make a nice sharp crease again, starting in the center and working our way out. And one more time, we're gonna fold the layered part in half. Right here, just right through there. If you started with uh, anything thicker than 20 pound paper, your fingers are gonna get a real workout on this one. <laughs> so let's roll that over one more time, folding the layered part in half. Your time and line it up. Try to control those layers. It's a lot of layer to control. And sweeping to the outside and making a sharp crease. We're gonna do something extraordinary here to sharpen this crease. We're gonna pick it up on this camera over here and we're gonna roll it over the edge of the table to sharpen the crease. And we're just gonna work it back and forth. The smooth side of the paper is up. Uh, the layered part is down against the layer part right over the corner of the table. Makes a great satisfying sound. <laughs> and now it's going to stand up. You can see it's going to stand up just like a little tunnel there. You can reach right under it. It's standing up nicely. Uh, now the trick here, let's flip it over so that we have the curved side up. We're going to unfold just the last time we folded it in half. The last time we did that. And I want you to come down here um, to the right-hand side of the plane, and we're just gonna lift up this corner here. Um, it's, it's layered, you can see there's a loop of paper here. A little loop of paper there. Uh, and, and I want you to put a finger inside there, like that. So we're separating the two corners here, the two single layer corners, and there's a double layer corner on top. So we're just gonna put a finger inside there like that, and then grab the other end. We're gonna wrap the other end around and put it right inside there, just like that. And we're gonna put it in there about that much. Yeah, it's a little bit more than an inch, maybe an inch and a half. You know, one thumb width, almost a one and a half thumb width is kind of an idea. So again, I made that look really easy and I know it's not. <laughs> so I'm gonna lift this top layer here there's a single layer on either, uh, you get a short single layer and a long single layer on one side. And I'm gonna put, just put my finger in there just to hold that open. We've got a double layer there that's got a corner. That's a crease right there. So it's, you have two layers and two layers. And we're just gonna pick this other end up, roll it around and put it inside there where our finger is and slide it in, uh, you know, inch and a half or so. And then hang on to it. Once you get it together, hang on to it. Because what we're going to do to lock this plane together is follow that crease all the way around that we unfolded. So what I like to do is start here. Hold on to it where the, where the um, layers overlap, where you put it one inside the other, and push it down right there. I like to reach up inside here with a finger and just kind of hold that, crimp that down like that. That'll help you as you're remaking the crease. And this is going to get ugly. I'm warning you now, it's going to get ugly. 
Here we go. It's getting ugly. It's getting really ugly. It's getting very ugly. And then suddenly, when you get it all the way around there, it starts to get beautiful. Look at that. It goes from very ugly to very beautiful in just, just a moment like that. And now, I'm going to push in just so you can see. I'm rounding it out just by going around there, smoothing it out. And it, it becomes really kind of an extraordinary circle here. Okay, let's flip it over. This is the heavy side up with all the layers there. You can see all the layering right there. Let's turn it over just briefly here. Right here is what we're going to fix next. This is the tail of the plane. It's popping open there a little bit. I don't like that. Some people leave that open. You can leave that open if you want. It will affect the flight. I feel like it adds a little bit of drag. So what I'm going to do is just go around that edge about, mm, I don't know, two, three millimeters you know, something like a little bit less than a quarter of an inch. And I'm just going to go all the way around the back of the plane, just moving that to the inside. And then just kind of pinching it to smooth that out. And that really looks a lot better, holds together a lot better. It's going to be smoother through the air. There's your tube. Now, there's no real adjusting here. <laughs> this is it. There's no control surfaces. You're going to throw it and it's going to rotate like that. You're going to throw it, let it roll off your fingertips. If you've ever thrown a spiral football, that's kind of what you're going for. So um, if you've never thrown a spiral football, it's actually kind of easy to learn how to do it with this tube. Um, start by throwing it like this and just giving it some backspin. And don't worry about how far it's going. Just worry about developing a good amount of spin, just like that. And, and you know, throw it a few times so that you're kind of getting the hang of it, imparting some good spin here. And once you got the hang of making it spin, just turn your wrist like this, same kind of motion, down like that and let it go that way. And so that's a good way to learn how to throw this guy. And you can give it a fairly hard toss. It really likes uh, a really good, solid throw. Give it a lot of spin, really hard throw. And you wrap your finger around it where the thick part is. Don't do it here where the, it'll squish on you. But get up here where the thick part is, wrap your finger around it, and then really give it a good hard spin and a good hard throw. It should zip out there 60, 70 feet, no problem. Uh, it's a great indoor plane. It's a little bit crazy to throw outdoors. You can't really tell what it's doing. Sometimes it gets caught in the wind and does crazy things. Really fun plane to learn how to make. Extraordinary to learn how to fly. It's the tube.